What's up guys, my name is Michael and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to go over this problem by Lentinian gold coins. Basically, you are given a coin N and it could be exchanged in a bank for three coins, N over two, N over three, N over four. But these numbers are all rounded down to make a profit. You can also sell by Lentinian coins for American dollars and the exchange rate is one to one. But you cannot buy a by Lentinian coin. You have one gold coin. What is the maximum number of do American dollars you can get for it? So, yeah, that's pretty much the problem here. You have a one by Lentinian gold coin. It has a number on it. The coin N can be exchanged into three coins, N over two, N over it three and over four and these coins are all rounded down to make a profit you can also sell the byte lentinian coins for american dollars and the exchange rate is one to one okay so how do you do this problem um let's just explain it now all right guys so now let's think about what exactly do we have to do in order to solve this problem so back to the problem statement remember we say that the exchange rate is one to one and that a n coin can be exchanged into three coins n over two n over three and n over four so let's just try some numbers and see if we could find a pattern. So let's say I have a, a, n is equal to 8, right? So I could exchange this for n over 2 plus n over 3 plus n over 4, right? And this is going to give me 8 over 2 plus 8 over 3 plus 8 over 4. And this is going to give me 4 plus 2, which gives me 4 plus 4. Okay. So this is just going to give me the exact same number as my original one. And remember, we want the maximum value, right? So you would just stick to the original. Now let's look at n over 7. Uh, let's look at n, n equals 7. All right, n equals 7 is would be, let's see, n over 2 plus n over 3 plus n over 4. So this is going to give us 7 over 2 plus 7 over 3 plus 7 over 4. And this is going to give us uh, 3 plus... 7 over 3, 3, 2, 6, 2, plus 7, 1, 1. This is going to give us 6, right? So at this point, you would only choose n equals 7, right? You don't split it. You just stick with n equals 7, right? Now let's try something else. Let's try 22, all right? Because 22 is something large. n equals 22. So then n over 2 plus n over 3 plus n over 4. This is going to equal to, let's say I try splitting it. I would get 22 over 2 plus 22 over 3 plus 22 over 4. This is going to equal to 11 plus 7 plus uh, 2, 5, 6, 5, 5. Yeah. And this is going to get me 18 plus 5, which is going to get me 23. So at this point, I would choose this splitting. I would choose the splitting instead of choosing the original value because we get more. Right, this is more. 23 is more than 22. So now our question is, when do we split and when do we keep the same value? So remember we go back to n over 2, n over 3, and n over 4? Well, apparently, basically it turns out that you would actually split if you, you would split more when you have greater than 12. So if n is greater than 12, you would actually want to split. Split. So you would actually add these up. And the reason why is because if you look at the LCM of 2, 3, and 4, the LCM of 2, 3, and 4 is 12, right? The LCM of 2, 3, 4, least common multiple is 12. And that's why when you get greater than 12, you want to split it because at the point when you get greater than 12, the value that after splitting and adding them up is going to be greater than regardless of the original value of n. No matter what you put after n is greater than 12, you are going to get a value that is going to be greater than the original value of 12. So anything less than 12, so let's say n is less than 12, right? Anything less than 12, you're just going to keep. Keep the original value and just return it. So now the big question is, is that how do I make this faster though? Because if I'm just going to keep splitting by 2, 3, and 4, and just keep repeatedly splitting, splitting for those values, I'm going to get a situation where I'm going to recalculate the same pro question over and over again, right? I'm going to get the same value. So like, let's say I had like six over two and then in another splitting, uh, the six over two is equal to three, right? I don't want to calculate this again, six over two equal to three over and over again. So we're going to do something called memorization, 
is when every time we calculate a certain value for n over 2 or n over 3 and n over 4, we are going to store that specific value into a map. And then every time we uh, have the same value that's divisible by it again, we are just going to look up the problem to it. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. Okay? So, yeah. So back to the problem. When I say that we're going to use memorization and that the given n... Um, basically what I mean is like, let's say we have like back to like 22, right? 22 is going to give us a value for, for this part. It's going to give us the best possible value for the max is going to give us 23, right? So then every time we, if we're going to ever look up the best possible value for coin 22, we're going to store the value of 22, best possible value for 22 as a value of 23, right? So then in, in the case of the, of the next iteration, let's say we had like, I don't know, 64, 100 or whatever different value of coin. And, you went and, went and when you split the values, if we had to look up the best possible value of 22 again, we don't have to calculate this again, this state again. We just have to look up and see if it, once we have it, we just add it to, we just return 23. So then we don't have to keep recalculating this part over and over again right and comparing if the left side's greater or the right side's greater right so then every time we compute something we're going to store it into a hash map and then store the best possible value for that value in the hash map and then we look it up and then we just return it so yeah um, i'm going to explain the code now and then i hope you guys understand what's going on all right guys i'm going to explain the code now to you guys so they said that to keep reading in n a test case until there's the end of the file so because of that i had to do this um long long n and a while cnn right that was going to keep reading it until the end of the file and then i print out my method exchange which basically returns with the the answer to whatever test case it was okay whatever number n it was okay so now let's go to the exchange method so above exchange, I have a map called S, and this map just stores the best possible value for each test case, right? So if it was 22, it would restore 23. If it was 8, it would store 8, right? Stuff like that, okay? So um, in my exchange function now, if my current value N is less than 12, I just return N. And I already explained the reason why we do this is because if it's less than 12, uh, we know that no possible number can be greater than this, right? Because if you do n over 2 plus n over 3 plus n over 4, it's always going to be less than the original number. So that's why we just return n. And yeah. Okay. Now we have this this condition, if s dot find n is not equal to s dot end. This is just checking if in our current map that we did did we already calculate the value of n did i already calculate the best possible value of n in the case to return so if it's not equal to the end this means that i already did calculate it so i just have to return it i don't actually have to recalculate it again okay that's what this this value means okay so if i already have a value inside this function in, inside my map that already stores the best possible value i don't have to recalculate it so i'm just going to return it now, otherwise, we actually do have to calculate it. So I have a, a variable called to return. And in here, I just pass in exchange n over 2. So I'm going to recursively call this original function and pass in n over 2. And that's going to keep calling the function again and again. All right. And then I'm going to add it to exchange n over 3. And then add it exchange n over 4. So this is going to recursively call it and get the best possible value for n over 2. And then add it with n over best possible value of n over three, and add it for the best possible value of n over four. Okay. Then after that, I set my because we did not have the this value calculated yet, right? Now the two returns are going to store the best possible value of n over two plus n over three plus n over four. Then I just store that in my map of s. So s at the s at the n, right? for the nth value for whatever my n value is right i'm going to set that equal to the best possible value that i just calculated and i just return to return okay so that's just going to return the best possible value that you just calculated so yeah that's basically how you do this problem 
it's just a bunch of recursive calls and then you just uh, store each recursive calls value inside a map and then you don't have to look it up again all right so that's pretty much how you do it rate comment subscribe i'll check you guys later peace